as a skincare blogger, I get the opportunity to try a lot of different products and share my opinions with you guys on them. And through the years, you know, I really have learned what my skin likes and doesn't like, and I feel like I have a really good, like, idea of what will work for me, and I'm very picky about my products. All that being said though, that doesn't mean that every product I try is a home run. And in fact, there are a lot of products in my skincare past that really have not hit the mark for me. So give this video a big thumbs up because today I want to share with you guys a selection of products that just did not work for me. We've got all kinds of products here. I mean, we've got products that have been put into skincare jail. They have been banished, in my opinion. So not worth your money or your time. Plus, I've got some products here that, you know what, your mileage may vary. Maybe they didn't work for me, but that doesn't mean that they're bad products and possibly wouldn't work for you. So before we get started, let me know in the comments what's one skincare product that you have put in your skincare jail, completely banished. Let me know in the comment box below and let's get started. <music> Okay, so first up is a product that devastates me that it made it into a video called products that didn't work for me because that was not the intention when I bought this product. This was a product I was so excited to review for you guys. And this is the Addo Palm MLE Cream. If you've been following me on Instagram for a while, you might have seen in my stories uh, quite a while back, I was getting really excited about this product. I first discovered the MLE uh, patented ingredient, which led me to this Addo Palm Cream, and I was starting to get so, so invested in this cream before I even bought it. And why is that? Well, MLE is a patented ingredient that basically takes all of my favorite ingredients, right? Ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids, the holy trinity of barrier repair ingredients, is all in one ingredient that not only is all of those great ingredients present, but it also puts them in the proper ratio, the golden ratio, meaning that they work more effectively. And it also actually puts them into a certain order so that they're actually received by your skin better. The research on this is really, really interesting, and it basically makes this MLE super skin identical, meaning that it's going to heal your barrier faster, it's going to work better for you, and it's just all around going to be a great barrier repair ingredient. Or so it promises, right? And that to me is very, very exciting. Not only because, you know, I went through my own barrier um, issues um, a while ago, healed my moisture barrier, but now, you know, having shared my experience, I realized that sharing my experience and sharing these types of products can actually help a lot of people. However, the real true like superstar barrier like treatment type of products that I have found in my experience that work so well, Crave Great Barrier Relief and a Stradia Liquid Gold, I realize that those products are not super accessible for everybody, especially if you're living outside of the United States. I know, but I just have not found a really readily available, like internationally available product that really hits, you know what I mean? Like that really checks off everything that it's supposed to and is really an excellent product. And that is why I was excited about discovering this because I was like, oh, finally, a Korean product that I can recommend that a lot of more people will have access to. But it didn't work. It just didn't work. Okay, so here's the nitty gritty on this. Here's why this didn't work. And it started for me before I even before I even ordered the cream actually, and definitely before I put it onto my face. So first issue that I had with this is that there are two versions of this cream out there. Now, um, I don't know if this is just due to like uh, repackaging, um, a difference in an American version and a Korean version, or maybe I just didn't look hard enough. I don't know the answer. I actually tried to reach out to Addo Palm and get the, the nitty gritty on, on this uh, issue, but they never got back to me unfortunately. So it's still going to be a little bit of a mystery. But here's what I can tell you. I ordered this cream on Yolse, and as you may know, if you've ordered from Yolse and you're an ingredients nerd like I am, you know that they don't really list ingredients on the Yolse website, which is extremely frustrating. I love shopping from Yolse. Their prices are outstanding. Their customer service is excellent. But one of my gripes with them, and you know what? Yes, Style isn't, you know, isn't immune from this either. Um, but you'll say just generally does not list ingredients, which means you got to go and Google them, right? 
no big deal. So I go and Google them. I find the ingredients list on adopalmusa.com and the, uh, the, the website listed the ingredients of this. Uh, everything looks good. There was included fragrance. Not my favorite thing, but also not a deal breaker. So I was like, okay, you know what? This looks pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and get this. And I actually looked at a couple of different websites and they all had the same ingredients list. So put in my order two weeks later, get my box. Really excited about this, this MLE cream. And then I look a little closer at the box that the cream came in and it's not the same ingredients list. So this is the problem. Um, problem number one is that there are two different um, MLE creams floating out there. One is called MLE cream and it has a little bit of uh, Korean writing uh, just underneath it. I believe this to be the Korean version, which is what I received. There's also a version out there that is called intensive moisturizing MLE cream. And I believe this to be an American or North American market version. However, their ingredients list do vary. The first kind of half of the ingredients list is exactly the same, which means that the core, generally speaking, the core uh, of this cream is going to be the same. However, it starts to vary towards the end of the list with the American version uh, ending with the word fragrance and the Korean version going off into a couple of different essential oils. And that was very disappointing because as you may know, essential oils have a really high potential to irritate sensitive or vulnerable in damaged skin, which means if you're suffering from a damaged moisture barrier, you definitely want to avoid essential oils, which is always something that I tell you guys, just, just quit with the essential oils until you're healed up. And so it was very frustrating for me to see that in this product, but being the tester that I am, I made a mental note that was going to be this, like, there was going to be this rant <laughs> in my MLE cream review video about this whole essential oils thing. But then I put it on my skin, guys. I put it on my skin for one week and I got an irritation, irritation. Um, in my last couple of videos, especially my routine videos, you've heard me say a product irritated my skin. I've been trying to bounce back from it, get my skin back into a healthy state. This is the product. This is the product that caused damage on my skin. And the essential oils that are being used in here are pretty nasty. Uh, <laughs> they're pretty nasty uh, essential, essential oils. They are using sandalwood oil in here. Sandalwood oil is a nasty oil. Um, as far as essential oils go, you know, um, Pretty much all essential oils are have the potential to irritate, but there are a few that have higher potential and a few that have lower potential. One that has lower potential is tea tree oil. One that has higher potential to irritate is sandalwood oil. Um, the fragrancing compounds in sandalwood oil have a high potential to irritate your skin, and that is, I believe, what caused the issue with this cream. It really made my skin itchy itchy and like burning irritation and it took a while actually for me to calm my skin down. So unfortunately, this was not the barrier savior that I really wanted it to be. And in fact, it's very disappointing to not only find two separate uh, ingredients lists, so just that alone confuses consumers, but the fact that this has such nasty ingredients for people with sensitive and vulnerable skin, who would most likely be wanting to buy a cream that will help to repair their moisture barrier is frustrating. So this was a big hard pass on for me. This is in skincare jail. This is banished and definitely I, I can't recommend this cream. This is definitely a use at your own risk. So next up is by Wish Trend Mandelic Acid 5% Skin Prep Water. This is an exfoliating toner that uses mandelic acid, which is an AHA, um, which works on the top layer of your skin to um, gently exfoliate away dead skin cells. It can actually make um, your skin a lot brighter, uh, less dull appearance, less uneven skin tone. It can help with some hyperpigmentation, you know, long term it can help with that. And if you have a little bit of textured skin, it can help to even that out over time as well. And I was actually really impressed with this looking at the ingredients list because it does have 5% mandelic acid, which I'll tell you isn't like a super low amount, but it's also not a super high amount either. I think this is a really nice kind of medium, um, medium, and it would probably be good for beginners, people who haven't used a lot of chemical exfoliation. I think this is a good way to introduce yourself. And it certainly could be good for skin that is a little bit more on the sensitive side. And um, just because 5%, like I said, I think that that's a really, that's enough to be effective, but it's not like 
aggressive, you know, it's an aggressive uh, percentage of mandelic acid. This is also blended with some skin hydrators and moisturizers. It has beta-glucan as well as hyaluronic acid plus some skin soothers like centella and aloe. Super impressive to look at that ingredients list. Um, it's really, it just seems like it's really nicely um, blended and balanced for the skin. And they do actually recommend this to be used for sensitive skin. And that is actually um, gentle enough to be used every single day. However, it just didn't work for my skin. Um, I put this on and I got some stinging sensations, pinprick uh, sensations, which is never a good sign for my skin. And I'll tell you, you know, I've definitely fallen into the trap of this thinking before in the past of, well, if it's stinging, if it's causing sensation on your skin, it means it's working, right? We know that that's not true, but that is a really pervasive myth in our in our skincare culture, right? Like a lot of us do uh, still think that or grew up thinking that. It's hard, it's, uh, it's hard um, thinking to break, but anytime you feel a sensation on your skin, you should uh, definitely take note. Not every sensation is bad, but definitely take note. So this did cause some stinging on my skin um, and it did cause a little like very, very minor like extra dryness type of irritation the next day. Um, I did wait, a, I think I waited like a week and then I tried it again and same thing. So I didn't really get to go too far with this one to really find out uh, if it worked for my face because it was just it was just too strong for my skin. And to be completely honest with you, AHA type ingredients just in my experience haven't really worked the best for me. Uh, my skin usually does best with more BHA type of of chemical exfoliation, and AHAs generally just aren't for my skin. That doesn't mean that this is bad though. This is more of the your mileage may vary kind of product. It didn't work for me, but it might work for you. Uh, as I said, I'm really impressed with the ingredients list on this. Super balancing, they've got some great extracts in this. Plus, the thing that I find the most with cleansing type toners, they often have a little bit of alcohol in them. Even if it's all the way at the bottom of the list, they have a little bit of drying or simple alcohol in them, which is a big no-no for sensitive skin, right? Even a small amount especially in a toner format, really not the best thing. There's no alcohol in here, and that was that was really nice to see. Um, like I said, formulation-wise, this is a nice one for beginners if you haven't used um, AHA. This might be a good place to start because it definitely is a little bit, bit more of a gentle intro into chemical exfoliation. Now, that being said that I only tried it twice on my face, I still have found a use for this bottle. I actually have been using this on my body, and I can tell you that it has a really nice gentle uh, effect on the skin, benefit on the skin. Um, I usually get like bumpy um, um, upper arm area right here, and I do get a few breakouts, and I do have hyperpigmentation on my body back. So I do use this. I see the biggest benefit with this um, on my uh, bumpy texture here on my shoulders. Um, as far as breakouts on the back, again, BHA type products like BHA peeling pads are probably going to be better, a better option for you if you have uh, acne. Um, but this actually seems to work really gently, slowly, but effectively on hyperpigmentation of the dark marks on my back. So it does work. <laughs> it is a, a nice, it's a nice formulation. For my particular experience on my face, it's just not for my sensitive skin, sometimes overly sensitive skin, but it's still a great product that definitely works, and I do think that this could be a good intro for you guys looking to get into AHA exfoliation. Claire's Supple Preparation Facial Toner. This is such a popular product, such a popular product, really hyped up. And if you've been following me for a while, you probably know why this is on the list. It really did not work for my skin. Um, this is a toner that really claims to hydrate your skin, balance your skin's pH. It also claims that it'll help your other skincare products work better by allowing them to absorb more effectively into your skin making them work better. Um, not so sure on those claims. What I can tell you is this is um, a jelly type of toner, like a, a little bit thicker. It's still uh, still runny, but it's a little bit thicker in consistency. It has some good hydrators um, and moisturizers in it. This one has hyaluronic acid, it has beta-glucan, it has a phytooleg in it, and it also contains six essential oils. And this is where we ran into the problem, um, especially with my sensitive skin. This is actually the product that made me start to question essential oils in skincare because prior to using this toner last year, I never really even thought about it. I didn't even really, I wasn't even really aware of the 
issue of it. Um, but this was the this was the product that made me start to think, hey, wait a second, this may not be the best thing that you can put on your skin. So what happened with this toner is I used it for I think it was like for two weeks the first time, and I started to get little white heads on my face. My skin felt the same. I didn't feel any irritation, but I saw all these weird little white heads on my skin, especially around my mouth. That's not how my skin normally reacts. Um, you know, my skin's MO <laughs> is clogged pores, um, dull skin, uh, black heads, um, it, you know, potential irritation, maybe some redness. I rarely will get like um, acne or like inflamed acne. I will rarely get white heads. So when things like this kind of crop up on my skin, it makes me go, okay, wait a second, something has changed um, and maybe it's a new product that I've introduced. This was a new product that I introduced, so it was kind of odd. It wasn't the worst thing in the world, so I stopped using it just to see if it would go away. And it did. Being the thorough tester that I am, I brought it back into my routine just to see. And the white heads came back. So this definitely was not something that was agreeing with my skin. And had I gone further with it, maybe used it for three weeks, a month, two months, who knows what could have occurred down the road, right? But this was a warning sign for me to stop. So I actually did try their unscented version. You guys may know that they do have a version of this that does not contain these six essential oils. It's actually the same formula, just without the essential oils. And that's kind of a clue to you as well that Claire's uh, introduced the version, an essential oil-free version, because there was so much complaint or um, so many people who were having difficulties with the original product that they came out with a less problematic version. Um, I did try that one and it worked just fine for my skin. So it's definitely the essential oils in this that caused an issue. Now, if you want to dive deeper into both of those products, I actually did do a um, comparison video review for you guys. So I'm going to link that up at the top right now so you guys can go check that out if you um, want to learn more about it but at the end of the day the reason that this makes the list is of course it did not agree with my skin but to be completely honest with you you know a lot of the other claims it just wasn't a product that lived up to the hype in my eyes it really didn't wow me and I am a toner fanatic and this certainly doesn't make my my uh, winner circle or my short list of really amazing toner products it was okay. Um, it's probably not a repurchase. Certainly not my favorite Claire's product out there. So this is definitely a your mileage may vary. I 100% recommend if you do want to try this toner to just go for the unscented version right away. Um, but definitely your mileage may vary on this one. And finally, a product that makes me so angry. There's so many things wrong with this product. This is a product that goes into skincare jail. It is 100% banished, in my opinion, and it's extremely disappointing. This is the COSRX Shield Fit Snail Essence Sun. This is SPF 50 with a PA of plus three. Now, you may have seen recently that COSRX came out with two new sunscreens in this really cute little pastel tubes. The other one is green. And these two sunscreens are kind of meant to complement each other. One is a mineral sunscreen. That's the green uh, tube. This one here, the yellow tube, this is their chemical sunscreen. And this is where the issues start, um, is with the UV filters that they're using here because they're really crappy, crappy UV filters. So the chemical filters being used are homosalate, octocraline, ethyl hexyl salicylate, butyl methoxy dibenzoyl methane. Now that may mean something for some of you guys out there, but for the majority of this, for us, those words mean nothing. I, I totally understand you. Let me break it down for you in the simplest manners. These are what are considered older generation chemical sunscreen filters. Now you guys may have heard me say things like new generation chemical filters um, and how they're much more photostable um, and they have less potential to irritate. Uh, chemical filters that I talk about a lot are like Uvinyl T150, Uvinyl A+, Tinosorb S. These are excellent chemical filters that are used in a lot of Asian beauty sunscreens. That ain't these guys. These are old generation filters that are not photostable. If you look up each individual filter, you will find that they are they are classified as having very poor photo stability. Sometimes when you have a filter that has poor photo stability, but it is kind of matched up with a more superstar uh, filter, uh, like an avobenzone, not like a great superstar, let's be honest, but avobenzone has been known to kind of help um, increase the photo stability of the overall formula of a sunscreen. 
I am not a cosmetic chemist, believe it or not, not a cosmetic chemist. However, it, in my research of these four UV filters, neither one, non, none of these, none of them seem to have the ability like avobenzone does to kind of help, kind of help raise the other ones up, if you know what I mean, kind of like just kind of help bring them up to a more photostable level. All of these just have poor photostability. So what does that mean for us? It means that this sunscreen is not going to protect you to a really high degree for a long time. It means you're going to have to reapply this often very often probably more than is like convenient for your lifestyle so that's kind of the first the first thing there is that these are just really crappy filters and honestly you know asian beauty sunscreens i hold them to a high standard because they're just made to a high standard generally speaking so to have an asian uh brand like this release such a really lackluster sunscreen as far as technology is concerned is yeah, I mean, it's definitely disappointing. So there's a problem right there. However, if you go into further in the ingredients list, we find more problems. We're going to find denatured alcohol in the ingredients list. I think it's like the third ingredient listed. Not always a deal breaker with sunscreen. As you know, the alcohol in sunscreen is generally there to help the sunscreen dry down faster, meaning you can go in with your makeup quicker or not have your hair stick to your face for like an hour, right? Um, however, we don't know if that's going to be drying or irritating to the skin until you try it right so not deal breaker but it is present not always a great sign uh, and it also contains essential oils definitely not a great sign um they they have essential oils in here it's bergamot oil mandarin orange peel oil as well as basil oil kind of odd uh, ones to use and the other kind of thing that really 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 struck me bad about this sunscreen before i got it onto my 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 face by the way was the smell the smell of this is terrible okay so the first time i i put it out on my hand i got like a three-prong effect with the set number one alcohol really strong alcohol smell number two i got was like pine needle smell and number three was like those two smells coming together and it was like a stereotypical like men's cheap cologne or deodorant product is very like old spice effect to it who tested this the smell and said this is good to go to market i have no idea because this is not a pleasant smell and it was a big warning sign to me that i probably didn't want to put this on my face i actually chickened out about putting it on my face once i smelt it and i actually ended up putting it on my neck because that's a real safe zone for me to put things especially products that don't work for my face they're usually fine on my neck because my neck my neck skin is like made of steel <laughs> my neck skin is so much more tolerant and a lot less sensitive than my facial skin but but after about three hours of having the sunscreen on my neck, my neck actually started to feel dry. I don't know that I've ever felt my neck like feel like it was getting like dehydrated or dry like my facial skin does. So that was a huge warning sign that if I had put this on my face, a lot worse would have happened. So never actually put this one on my face. I just I just can't. All of that aside, let's talk about the size. The size is about uh, 35 milliliters. That's so tiny. I mean, the bottle's super cute, sure. And yeah, maybe you can carry it around with you in your purse. It's a convenient size for travel, but it's still a really tiny size. This still like retails between like 13 and $15. And yet the Clear Soft Air UV Essence, which is one of my favorite facial sunscreens, comes in 80 milliliters. So it's even less than half of that size. And the Claire's is like $20. So, I mean, price and size, the value, the ingredients, quality, it's just not there with this sunscreen and it's extremely disappointing. Oh, feels good to get some of that anger and aggression out about products that make me so mad. All right, so those were some products that just did not work for me. So if you haven't shared in the comments yet products that didn't work for you, let me know in the comment box below and maybe we can help each other save some money. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I release two new skincare videos every single week. And if you turn on those notifications, you'll never be out of the loop when I release the new video. I absolutely cannot wait to see you in the next video. Hope you're having a really wonderful day. And if you can't wait to see me either, come hit me up on Instagram. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.